My name is Terrence Cooper. I am 24 years old. I live in Tampa, Florida. As a kid, I was pretty active. Sports, school, video games, hanging out with my friends, eating a lot, <laughs> you know. My father was in the Air Force, so I moved around a lot. And uh, he was an extremely active child, involved in sports from, I think, the time he was four or five years old. I started high school in Germany. We traveled from base to base um, every weekend to have track meets and basketball games. Yeah. Mom and Dad were always cheering me on in the mornings at my track meets and at the basketball games. You can call him a love child from before he was even born. You know, we planned him and uh, he finally arrived, 10 pounds, one ounce, <laughs> and uh, loved to eat, very friendly, was never a shy kid. Wherever he went, he always wanted to be the life of the party. Never waited on lines, always went around the line and wanted to be first. And um, loved school, loved friends since he was a baby. It seems like people would come to the house to hang out with Terry. The, he's the jewel of the home, like we always call him. The night of the accident, um, he came home from school and then he said he had to step back out to have a fraternity party going on and they wanted him to attend. It was October 26 of 2006. I went to school. I had, a, um, I had a night class that I was doing at Hillsborough Community College. And I was thinking of, um, of pledging with a frat at a USF. Because my plan was to transfer to another school. I came home for a little bit, changed my clothes, and we were going. So his friend had a BMW and convinced him to park his car at his apartment and he drive with him. On the way home, I fell asleep. I was in a passenger. And um, my friend lost control of the car. And um, when I woke up, the car was flipping. The car flipped maybe 12 times. And um, I didn't realize what was going on until I opened my eyes and the car was already tumbling over. Before midnight, he didn't show up. I called his phone, he didn't answer. A few minutes later, the bell started to ring, so his dad thought, oh, you locked him out, go open the door, and instead it was his friend telling us that Terry got into a bad wreck and we needed to come. When I woke up, at first I was just in this room by myself, and they had my, um, my neck in a, um, some type of a neck brace. I was laying flat on the bed, and they told me that my parents were there, and my parents came in, and it was pretty emotional. When I got there, I saw Terry up against the wall just crying. I thought maybe we lost him. And finally they came and they took us in. And he was laying on a stretcher with a bunch of bright lights in his face. And of course, Terry was dripping tears all over his chest while he was laying there. And all he can tell us is, Mom, Dad, feel my body. I don't feel anything. He kept telling us, Ma, I think I'm paralyzed. And I wasn't sure at first that I was paralyzed until uh, I had my parents feel my legs and feel the rest of my body and I had no feeling at all. And I kind of just knew, you know, once uh, I couldn't feel anything that I was paralyzed. You know, um, I wasn't sure if maybe I was just in shock from the accident or if, I mean, Um, I just wasn't sure what the doctors were going to tell me. Okay. I'm not sure what the word is. Maybe appreciation for who Terry is really came to fore. Uh, I think you, you have a child that uh, you talk to every day about all the things you want for them. Um, and you're not sure that they really understand what you say. Um, and it was very clear that Terry had connected to a whole host of people. I think there must have been 300 people who came to see Terrence while he was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone who came had really positive things to say about who he was or who he is as a person. A lot of my friends have been around for me and coming over and we laugh and joke around. And some of my friends come spend the night on the weekends and they make time to come and make sure I'm okay. And you know, like we laugh and joke like nothing's ever happened. 
if there's a family party or whatever, Terry, even though he's sitting in his wheelchair, he's always the life of the party. Everybody gravitates around him. And he's always in a great mood, you know? Sometimes dad goes to bed and leave us up and we're laughing and joking and he's wondering what's taking you so long, but it's hard to walk away from him. My goal is to be as independent as possible. I'm to go back to school, to start working again, you know, kind of get back to my old life as, you know, as best as possible. I mean, even after my accident, you know, some people, they get injured and they kind of give up on their hopes and dreams, but mine is still pretty alive and I'm still hoping to do a lot of those things that I've always wanted to do. I mean, you can't be mad at yourself or the person that may have caused the accident if you were a passenger or if you fell or you can't really be, be mad at yourself, you can't be mad at God. My advice would be just to stay faithful. Try not to, you know, like have any type of self-pity. I mean, my thing is just to be strong and just tell yourself every day that you, you know, you have a new life and you can still go out and be a normal person. You can still have your same hopes and dreams. You know, people are gonna look at you different, but you know, they look at you because they probably, you know, like they're probably wondering what happened. I doubt they're looking at you because, you know, you're in a wheelchair. I mean, there's so many things that you can still do. And my thing is that if you stay, you know, like the same person that you were before your accident, that it'll all, you know, work out in the end.